Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hold My Nuggets Incorporated for your 2019, although it's 2020, but you know it's the 2019 season. I gotta keep saying it because I keep seeing knuckleheads commenting in the comments like, it's 2020, get with the times, it's a new decade, why you keep saying 2019? Shut up, stupid! But of course, all right, your 2019 NFL Playoff Divisional Round pre-game analysis show. I am the host, do you see the biceps? Flexing the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical, individual, the chiseled Adonis. And first and foremost, before we even break down the games, I will be going live for all four divisional games and also the national championship. That's right, three consecutive days. I will be putting my voice to work as if I'm Adele in the studio. I set fire to the rain. Not set fire to no rain. I'm going to be lighting the hot mic on fire. That's the correlation. I have to figure out a way to use fire. Fire is hot. The mic is hot on the hot mic app. So download it. Use the promo code Adonis. It's absolutely free. And you can fellowship in the chiseled Adonis live service during the games. But of course, you can watch it here on YouTube as well. But on Hot Mike, you have yourself a little bit of an incentive. You can win yourself an Amazon gift card. All right, but all the details will be released while we go live. I'll do another promotional video for it tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I mean, it's not really something you should stay tuned for. I just want to inform you that I will be going live. College, um, you know, football commentary, I'm going to have two released today. The final two, you know, released tomorrow, that being, um... Uh, was the Fiesta Bowl and, 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 and the Peach Bowl. Two of those college football playoff games will be released tomorrow. Yes. And then tonight, or I should say this afternoon, the Rose Bowl. And there's another bowl. Is it the Sugar Bowl? Yes, the Rose and the Sugar Bowl will be released today. Yeah, and then the regular, co you know, the playoff commentary will be released when it's released. But of course, oh, and before I can jump into the game, shout out to my man Samuel. Uh, the, the, the the owner, founder of the uh, Black Real Estate Dialogue Podcast. I bought a shirt, brother. I bought a shirt. But what about the Chisel the Dunnest merch? They're on the way. I know I've been saying that for two years. But I finally got some things actually going. The boy is putting the groundwork down. I'm holding myself to it. I told myself I was going to get the merch released this year. If I don't, I'm going to shoot myself. I, I'm lying. I'm not going to shoot myself. I can't actually confirm or deny if I'm going to do that. Hey, Jeffrey Epstein said he wouldn't hang himself either. And somehow it still happened. Is this a suicidal note in the video? Whatever the case may be, let's jump into the games. All right. We had a magnificent wild card weekend. Every single game came down to the wire. Every single game came down to the final possession. All right. But the Patriots threw an INT. It was still a chance with 15 seconds. It's still raining over there. You saw two overtime games. You also saw, you know, uh, Josh McCown go down the field on a final drive. But of course, we ain't talking about that right now. Let's talk about what is coming up. And first and foremost, we've got the Minnesota Vikings taking on the San Francisco 49ers. And this kind of messed up, you know, what my plans for Divisional Week was going to be because I did not, ex you know, expect Minnesota to win. And once again, to Minnesota fans, I apologize to you. I would have loved to see another rematch in the NFC West. Perhaps we could get that in the NFC Championship. But of course, we're not overlooking any sort of games. We've got the Vikings taking on the 49ers. And I'll tell you this much, since it is in Santa Clara, I am a bit skeptical about those Vikings, all right, going on the road, they're now five and four on the road. However, we must also point out that Adam Thielen had a little bit of an ankle injury in practice. Stefan, Dick Doug Trio used TM28, Dick, uh, had a little bit of a flu the past two days where he could not practice. I think I did Diglett sound, whatever the case may be. All right, we've got injuries at the wide receiver position for the Vikings. However, Mike Zimmer said he was, you know, um, he's expecting those two to play. All right, but the biggest question for me is the ground game against this San Francisco front because they are getting some help back. All right, D Ford will be playing. Quan Alexander will be playing well, and, and, and there's also the uh, the safety for the um the safety should be back now. Uh, for the uh, uh, the 49ers. I'm forgetting what his name was. It's going to come to me. I think I'm looking at it right now. Is it... Jaquiski? Jaquiski? Whatever the case may be. All right, he's going to be back as well. But the biggest question for me is 
this 49ers offense, can they replicate what they've done throughout the season? And I'm speaking primarily that run game. Because we did not see a run attack from, Sam, uh, from New Orleans last week. That got shut down. The leading rusher was Taysom Hill. All right? Alvin Kamara did nothing on the ground. The most Latavius of Murrays did nothing on the ground. Taysom Hill only had like, what, 40, 43, 50 yards, whatever the case may be, on four carries. So I don't, if the run game cannot get going, for San Francisco, they are in trouble. Not to say that Jimmy G's not capable, but you make them one-dimensional, and you expect that Vikings front four to get after them. Why? Because the Vikings are built for playoff football, at least defensively. Why is that? Although their cornerbacks are a bit, you know, they're a bit suspect. They're a bit suspect. Xavier Rhodes, I'm looking at you. You're aging. You're not what you used to be. But that front four is some serious. Danielle Hunter, all right, uh, Linville Joseph, and also Everson Griffin. They fixing to get after that quarterback without needing a blitz. But if you do need to bring a blitz, here comes Barr. All right? Here comes the other brother. I'm forgetting what his name was. Is it Kendricks? I think it's Kendrick. Here he comes as well. Uh, is he playing? I'm not too sure. But whatever the case may be, all right, that is the biggest concern. The 49ers need that run game going because if they become one-dimensional, they about to have a bad time. I'm not sold on Kirk family member Cousins, although you did win a playoff game. I think that CC, that's Vikings fans calling me right now. I thought you gave us your press. Once you said you're not sold on Cousins, we gonna call you fool. Well, I ain't picking it up. I ain't picking it up. But basically, I don't know how they're playing Santa Clara. Now, you're playing inside of a dome. You're accustomed to playing in domes. Now you're going to be playing outdoors on the West Coast. Not to say that you know, it's hard to play on the West Coast. It's actually harder to play on the East Coast because you know you got weather defects in the West Coast. It's sunshine and rainbows every single day. Okay? And, you know, more rainbows in Santa Clara because, you know, it's a land of the gates. But, of course, all right, I would like to see how Minnesota runs this football. I need them to go out there and utilize that dreadlocks backfield because if Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison get going, I'm saying right now, Minnesota fixing to win this game. All right? But as I said for the 49ers, they got to get that run game going, and more importantly, you got to protect, you know, Jimmy G. If the Vikings bring that front four and they put that pressure on you the same way they did last week, this game will go to Minnesota. And to be quite honest with you, I think I'm going to go upset alert on this game. I'm rolling with Minnesota, man. I am rolling with Minnesota to win this game on the road. I think they'll be able to silence the doubters. And more importantly, I think that front four will be the reason why they're going to walk away with this W. I think they're going to get that run game going. I think it's going to open up in you know, a pass game for Kirk family member Cousins. I expect Kyle Rudolph to have a bigger game. Not so many big, huge catches, but enough catches on third down, they're going to try to close in the middle of the field. But Adam Thielen going one-on-one -on -one against um, Richard Sherman. We usually see Thielen lined up more times on the right. So that's going to be a one-on-one a one -on -one battle for the ages. But Stephon Diggs has to make his presence felt. He, mu he must make his presence felt. Because if he has another two catches for 19 yards sort of day, the Vikings will lose. All right? And I'm feeling right now, I'm feeling right now, Minnesota's fixing to, you know, upset the 49ers. Walk in there and walk out there with a W. We haven't seen a wild card team make it to the Super Bowl since 2012. That being the Baltimore Ravens and Ray Lewis playing his last game in M&T Bank Stadium. Doing the squirrel dance, dancing all over those motherfuckers in his final game at home. But of course, we can't talk about the Super Bowl yet. We're about two, well, three weeks away. We still got a whole lot of football left to be played. But I'm rolling with Minnesota to win this game against the 49ers, all right? I'm saying Minnesota will win on the road. This is one of those games that I'm not really feeling too truly confident in. But I'm going to say Minnesota, I think they're going to be able to pull off the upset. All right, this got nothing to do with whether you know the 49ers are young. We don't trust young teams in the playoffs. I don't believe none of that horse shit. All right, you play football. Bottom line, you play football. Minnesota is playing good football right now. Not to say that the 49ers are not, but there's just something about that defensive line. I think Danielle Hunter is going to go completely off and berserk. Do you see this man's arms? It's ridiculous. Arm cut up like Nicole Brown Simpson. I've never seen such a large man with cuts like that. Well, then again, that's a lie because I've seen Aaron Donald shirtless. Many people have sent me the, uh, the, the photos and said, he's the real Chisel the Donald. Well, how about screw you, man? How about screw you? Don't give my name away to other people. We ain't talking about that right now. But moving on to the next game, we've got the Tennessee Titans and Baltimore Ravens. This is intriguing. All right, because this is a game that you do not want to leave your seat for. Why? Because it's going to be a very quick game. They usually have football bracketed at three hours. I think this game is fixing to be about two hours and 27 minutes. Why is that? Because both these teams will run the ball down your throat. 
all right? That's exactly what's going to happen. I expect to see both teams a combined at least 70 carries amongst the both of them. I expect Derrick Henry to have well over 25 carries. If Mark Ingram is able to go, I expect him to get at least 12 to 15. Lamar Jackson will be carrying the football, and Gus Edwards will get the ball in his hand a couple of times as well. You can't forget Hill, who's going to get his hands on the ball in maybe about between three and five snaps. But this is going to be a running game. But I'll say this much. Tennessee was able to bring pressure on Tom Brady with four. Believe me, they will be watching that tape from what Los Angeles did to the Ravens last year, and perhaps they're going to be dropping DBs on the field. You might see seven defensive backs come onto the field. We saw Baltimore last year run all over everybody for the last seven games where they were running the football at the highest pace in the league. Then they got into the playoffs, and that got completely shut down because you counter Baltimore's speed on the ground with speed of your own. But Tennessee has had some issues with the defensive backs regarding, you know, availability. A lot of people have been getting hurt throughout um, the year, but of course, now they're at a spot where they can put people on the field who have good lateral quickness and sideline to sideline speed. So I'd like to see them go out there Maybe put six defensive backs on the field, have them read that read option, and take Lamar Jackson away from being able to run that football. Because if you take Lamar's you know, ability to run the football away, now you're going to have yourself a quite interesting game. If he's allowed to go out there and scramble and run all day, you're going to have a bad time. All right? Offensively, I do not think that Derrick Henry will have any issues this game. I do not think he's going to have any issues this game. Baltimore hit you. Oh, they'll come and hit you, but Derrick Henry will hit you first. And the same way I felt about them going into Foxborough, and I said that the Titans would walk away with the victory because I believe Derrick Henry would have a sensational game, and indeed he did, I think he's going to do the exact same thing this week. Hand the football to Derrick Henry often. Hand, it to foot, uh, hand the football to Derrick Henry early. Let that man put his shoulder pads in defensive linemen, in, in, in linebackers, in the secondary, hell, if he's running towards the sideline, put your shoulder into John Harbaugh. Don't do that, because you're going to get a flag. You might just mess around and get ejected. I like John Harbaugh, too. Not that whether I like him or not actually matters. If you want to put your shoulder pad in him, you can go ahead and do that, but you'll cost your team the season. Don't do that, Derrick Henry. Don't do that. All right, but basically, the way I see it right now is Derrick Henry is going to have himself a game, and I would have loved to say that this would be an upset alert, but to be quite honest with you, I was feeling Tennessee all week. I think Baltimore is going to be able to leave this game with a W off the toes of Justin Tucker. I don't expect Baltimore to have a great game running on the football. However, I think this will be one of those games where you see Mark Andrews show why he's Lamar Jackson's favorite target. Logan Ryan and the other safeties out there had better understand you take away Mark Andrews, you take away Hayden Hurst, you have an opportunity. If you force Lamar Jackson to have to throw the ball to Hollywood Brown or throw the ball to um, Willie Sneed or throw the ball to, I'm forgetting what the other receiver's name is, whatever the case may be, get it to the actual receivers, you have a chance. If the tight ends get going, you're going to have a bad sign. Not to say those receivers are not capable, because they are, but they ain't what the tight ends have been for the Baltimore Ravens offense thus far this season. So if you're Tennessee, load the box with defensive backs who have good lateral quickness to take away that run, and also you better have defensive backs who can hit. That's what aided the Chargers last year. They had defensive backs who wasn't scared to go out there and tackle. So for the Titans, you better make sure you reinforce them shoulder pads and get people who are ready to put their shoulder into a Gus Edwards, put their shoulder into a bowling ball Mark Ingram, put their shoulder into a shifting or shifty Lamar Jackson, and you'll have an opportunity to win this game. I think this is going to be relatively close. It's a flip of a coin on who the hell going to win this game. I think it's coming down to a field goal. I'm going to give the edge to Baltimore. However, I'll say this, because there's been throughout the entire season where I've doubted the Tennessee Titans and they came out and proved me wrong. This is a game that can go either way. Just like, you know, Minnesota and San Francisco, but I'm going to go upset alert on, on Minnesota. I ain't going to do two upset alerts for um, the first day of football. So I'm going to go and give it to Baltimore, but damn it, I would not be surprised if Tennessee walks away with this W, man. This is one of those games, I'm going to let you know during the stream if I feel like I'm going to switch my pick. And I'll only switch it during the beginning. I ain't one of those people who watch the first quarter all of a sudden, ooh, we got a flip-flop. I don't do that. All right? But I'm leaning 
towards Baltimore to win this game off the toes of Justin Tucker. So thus far, let's take a look at the predictions. We got Minnesota on the road, Baltimore at home. Fast forward to Sunday. Houston traveling to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. And I'll tell you this much. Man, I like Houston. I like Houston. Why is that? I never trusted Kansas City's defense. And I told you this from the beginning of the season. I told you this through the season. And I said Kansas City will be what Green Bay was during the 2010s. Spectacular quarterback play. However, the abysmal defense will cost them an opportunity to win. We've seen Damian Williams over the course of the past couple of games accelerate, or I should say play much better on the ground. However, I don't think that will be enough to aid Patrick Mahomes in offense, or at least I can say aid Patrick Mahomes when he's off the field. Because while Damian Williams, Tariq Hill, Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, uh, pa and, and everybody else on the offense is on the sideline, they're going to see their defense give up a ton of points. This is going to be a game where Kansas City scores 30, but Houston mess around and score 37. This is going to be a game where Kansas City score 40, but Houston mess around and score 45. This is a game where we going to look it's going to look very similar to the 2017 divisional round between the Steelers and um, the Jaguars, where one defense simply cannot get enough stops to give their team the victory. I'm leaning towards Houston to win this game. Why am I doing this with my fingers? I look like I'm trying to do jutsu. Whatever the case may be. All right, I got Houston winning this game on the road. And Chiefs Kingdom, I know what you're saying. Stay sleeping on us, man. Why are you taking that and why, Quill, whenever it's Chiefs game? Why are you using Z, Quill? Who gave him anesthesia? I'm telling you right now. It's not that I don't believe in Mahomes in that offense. It's that defense I do not believe in. And hell, Kansas City fans will tell you they don't believe in that defense either. If you saw the fourth quarter, the last 17, 18 minutes, all right, so I'd say about the tail end of the third, the entire fourth, and then overtime, you saw Houston come alive. You saw Deshaun Watson with his back against the wall, not get claustrophobic, although, where is this wall? You can only get claustrophobic if you're in a tight space. If this wall is like in the damn Mall of America. You're not really going to get claustrophobic, but of course, we can talk about that right now. But you're seeing Deshaun Watson with his back against the wall, a step, or I should say overcome all odds and lead his team back. So who's to say this won't transpire this week? I believe in, you know, Houston. I think J.J. Watt's going to have himself a day again. I would circle, uh, um, you know, uh, Ronald Darby. I said Ronald Darby. I steadily keep calling Bradley Roby Ronald Darby. It's really starting to piss me off. I would circle, you know, Roby. I would circle J.J. Watt. I would circle Whitney Merciless. Those are the three people to watch on the Houston defense. Am I doing some sort of, what am I doing right now? Is this a triangle? What am I doing? I feel like I'm in the Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. What's going on, 1998? All right, but I, I'd circle those guys. I think they're going to make plays for this Texans defense and give the ball back to Deshaun Watson. I expect DeAndre Hopkins to go absolutely wild this game. There's questions about whether Will Fuller will return. Nobody's too sure. It appears this will be a game time decision. At first, in the beginning of the week, they said it was doubtful. Now I'm hearing questionable. I've heard many different sources say he will play, others saying he won't play. I'm not too sure myself. But I'll tell you this much whether he plays or he does not play, I'm still rolling with the Texans to win this game on the road. As I said, I think the Chiefs will score over 30. I think they will score over 30, but their defense will fail them. I've been saying this all season. I ain't fixing a change now. That defense will fail them. And I understand Teron Matthew has been absolutely bald. I understand the Honey Badger has been killing, but it's not going to be enough to galvanize that team and get them going, man. I'm sorry. I'm rolling with the Texans to win this game on the road. And last but not least, Seattle and Green Bay. Oh, man. You know, I chose either Green Bay or New Orleans to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Oh <sighs> boy, New Orleans let me down. And Minnesota fans, I apologize once again. I don't know how many times I have to keep apologizing until you guys are eliminated. That's the only time I can stop apologizing. But, man, um, this is going to be tough. This is tough. Uh, I'm going Green Bay to win this game. And I'll tell you why, all right? Because there is going to be an increase in ball carries for Marshawn Lynch. 
I don't think he's going to be the same Marshawn Lynch we've seen of old. Had this been Marshawn from four years ago, him getting an increase of carries would be something scary. But once again, we're going to see, you know, this depleted, you know, offense for uh, um, the, the Seattle Seahawks go out there and play against, you know, a defense that we're not too sold on yet. Green Bay through the first eight weeks actually had people like, whoa, wait a minute, Aaron Rodgers got a defense now? Remember the last time he had a defense, they don't want a Super Bowl. Then they, you know, showed the Dennis Green challenge because they are who we thought they were. But I think Zadarius Smith, I think Preston Smith will get after Russell Wilson and make this man's day ridiculously arduous. All right, because there's no question on whether Brown will be back um, for the Seattle Seahawks. So because that's the case, who knows what will happen with that offensive line? Who knows if your party's going to be playing? Now, I'm not too sure as of right now either. But I'm going to say I'm rolling with Green Bay to win this game. The Eagles had virtually no run game against the Seattle Seahawks. I do not think that's going to be the case this time, this time of game for the, the Green Bay Packers. I think Aaron Jones is going to get going. He doesn't need to get you over 100. All he needs is 70. All he needs is 70. I cannot foresee, you know, Trey Flowers and company being able to guard Devontae Adams, Marquez, Valdez, Scandling, Jerome or Allison, or Jimmy Graham. I think all of these guys are going to make plays. I think one of those guys are not playing. It might be Geronimo Allison or Valdez Scandling. I'm not too sure which one. I think one of them is not playing. Or maybe they're both playing. I'm not too sure. Whatever the case may be, I think Aaron Rodgers will stay upright. I think he's going to be able to make plays. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I think it had Carson Wentz been playing last game, there's a high possibility the Eagles could have messed around and won. I still chose Seattle to win that game, and indeed they did. But Aaron Rodgers is no Josh McCann. If you leave this game 17-9, to and you think, Aaron Rodgers only going to score nine points and ain't going to hit double digits. I got some news for you. All right. And that news is being delivered by Bad News Barry because I'm afraid I've got bad news because the damn Packers are fixing to win this game at home. And I really wanted in my soul Seattle to play against the 49ers in the divisional round because I believe that the 49ers would have been bounced by Seattle because I still believe Seattle will beat, you know, the 49ers twice this season. If by some miracle, and it's not really a miracle, it's just a miracle because I chose against both teams. If by some Adonis miracle that the 49ers and the Seattle Seahawks both win this weekend, Seattle's going to the Super Bowl, and you can bank on that. If I'm wrong in my two NFC predictions this particular week, all right, Seattle's going to the Super Bowl because they will beat the 49ers again, but we ain't talking about that right now. We'll have to talk about that next week if by some miracle that it does happen, but we're talking right now about the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks, where I believe the Green Bay Packers will hold down the front at home. All right, DK Metcalf, 160 yards, rookie receiving record for the debut game in the postseason. I don't think he's going to do the same sort of performance this upcoming game. This is a game where Tyler Lockett has to get going. Because the Packers have seen the film on DK Metcalf and they might just roll that coverage over top. Knowing that DK beat, you know, Seattle deep. Beat Seattle deep. They beat, he beat Philadelphia deep on three different occasions, I believe. So if that being the case, Tyler Lockett, this is the game where you must go off. But it all starts up front. If you don't give Russell Wilson time, you're going to have a bad time. For the Packers... Bulaga is back. He's out of the concussion protocol. So, uh, and the offensive line for the pack uh, for the Packers from where it sits right now is probably the one of the better situations that they have thus far this season. So it's truly up to those guys up front. Give Rodgers time. There's no doubt in my mind this will be a W. I don't think this game will be close. I think it's going to be a separate uh, a separation. Matter of fact, I can't say it's not going to be close. I can't say it's not going to be close because this Green Bay, this this, this Seattle. This Green Bay, this Seattle. I think every single game this dog on with this this weekend going to end the same way it was last weekend. I think all these games going to be great. I think it's all going to come down to the wire. You know what? This ain't going to be a spread of 10 points. This fixing to be a spread of three. But it's going to be a, 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 a comeback 
from Seattle that falls, you know, short. Whether that's by one yard, whether that's a missed field goal, whether that's a fourth down play, a heave towards the end zone that's batted down. But I got the Green Bay winning this game at home. And that is my picks for our 2019 NFL playoff divisional round pregame analysis. Those are my picks. All right. So I got Minnesota. Woo -woo! Upset alert. Winning on the road against the San Francisco 49ers. I got the Baltimore Ravens holding down the front and the attack on Titans will continue and you're gonna see the Armored Titan. You're gonna see the Colossal Titan. You're gonna see the Beast Titan. All Titans go down, Teen Titans, go down against the Baltimore Ravens. Then, we're gonna see those Houston Texans walk in and represent Texas all up in Missouri and take down those Chiefs. What you talking about? This America, we don't fuck with no Chiefs. You didn't learn about what the Pilgrims that was a little bit racist. I'm sorry about that, natives who are watching this. But they're going to take down the Chiefs. And last but not least, we're going to see those Packers, the land of the Chiefs. What you talking about? Seahawks are lactose intolerant. How about you take a block of this here cheese, put the cheese wheels in their mouth? Is that how people in Wisconsin talk? Whatever the case may be, I got the Packers winning. So, with our old jokes aside, Minnesota, Baltimore, Houston, Green Bay, moving on to Championship Sunday. Those are my picks. Let me know what yours are. And more importantly, as I said, I will be going live for all four games and also the National Championship. So three consecutive days, I will be going live. So tune into the stream. You saw me post the Derrick Henry sermon. Those kinds of stuff happen during the games in real time. All right, there's no script to where I'm sitting over here watching after the fact. Oh, no, the people who are tuned into the stream, they can tell you how entertaining it was. It's always a fun stream. It's not like I'm just sitting here over here watching the game, providing commentary. We're going back and forth. We're having our top fives in the comments. section. We're ranking our favorite players. We're, we're saying who's better than who. We have a little bit of a trivia situation for giveaways so you can win yourself an Amazon gift card. All those details will be released for every and individual stream. Multiple time winners. There's, if you've won before, you can win again. All right, shout out to JP. He's won twice. All right, we have new, you know, it's always fun. You tune into the stream, it's always fun. All right, do not miss the opportunity. I'm going to leave the links in the description so the individual time scan guy who shows up, rather than, you know, take your uh, copy and paste your numbers and it just credit you in the um, the comment section, I would much rather pin you uh, um, to the top as a top pin comment because I believe that timestamp individuals, you guys earn that rather than me just copying and pasting and then giving you your credit inside the comment section. So I'd rather do that and then comment, you know, the links underneath. Also, they're going to be in the description as well. So download the Hot Mic app. I know tonight, you know, the All The Smoke podcast, Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes will be live on Hot Mike, and they're trying to usurp me as number one on the app. And hold my nugget studios and the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical, individual, the chiseled Adonis will not allow ourselves to be usurped at the number one spot. There will be no coup d'etat from these NBA champions. It's not going down like that. All right, I was the first to 2,000. I'm fixing to be the first to 2,500. I'm fixing to be the first to 3,000. I'm fixing to be the first to 5,000. And I will not lose to these damn weed smokers in California. That's not to say anything racist. You know, they actually do smoke weed. They have, uh, they call themselves kush ups. They do push ups while they're smoking. Why are we talking about this right now? So download the Hot Mic app. It is absolutely free. Use the promo code Adonis. Get it on your phone, get it on your brother's phone, get it on your sister's phone, your grandmama, your pappy, your uncle, your niece, your nephew, whatever the case may be. Get it on their phones. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And aid the chisel of the darkness and staying number one on this groundbreaking app. Why listen to Brooklyn McFarlane? Why listen to, you know, uh, Troy Aikman? Why listen to Tony Rome? Matter of fact, you might want to listen to Tony Rome. Why listen to, you know, Jim Nance? Why listen to Chris Collins' work? Why listen to, you know, Al Michaels? You want to hear the chiseled Adonis. But of course, let's wrap this all up. So, thank you guys for tuning in to your 2019 NFL, you know, playoff divisional round pregame analysis show. Type down in the comment section who you think is going to win and why. Um, and, hey man, let's enjoy a good weekend of football. I have been your host, the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical, individual, the Chisel Adonis, I got my voice back. Who knows if it's going to be back, or I should say still with me at the conclusion of the national championship. But hey, the, the, a small price to pay for salvation. Ain't that right, Thanos? I'll see you guys later.